So today I'm going to be talking about Dinora by Meyerbeer and its famous shadow scene um, and why I love it so much. Now let's get started. Le Pardon de Plurmel, also known as Dinora, was the second to last opera written by Meyerbeer in 1859. It premiered as a French comic opera, but then was later rewritten in Italian and renamed Dinora for audiences outside of France later in the 1800s. Just gonna be real here. Dinora is by no means Meyerbeer's best opera or his most famous opera. Um, in fact, it's actually very rarely performed in the United States now, um, and it's pretty forgotten about. But hidden in the super, super twisted story is actually this fantastic scene, fantastic aria um, called Ombre Legera, and it's Dinora's mad scene where she goes insane and begins to sing to her shadow. And it's one of my favorite things that I've had the pleasure to work on over the last year. So it's a pretty special scene to me, so I hope you learn something new from this and you can appreciate its awesomeness. Now here's a little bit about the opera. I'm just going to give a short version because honestly the story is super, super, super confusing. The opera takes place in the countryside of France where a young woman has gone mad after her wedding was interrupted by a storm a year earlier. Her lover is the local goat hunter, Hoel, who ends up leaving her after the wedding was interrupted. Um, she also lost her pet goat somewhere along the way, and so she's looking for it. Eventually, in Act 2, she finds herself alone in the woods, where a beam of light from the moon falls on her, casting a shadow. And she is so distraught about losing her husband that she just loses it and starts frantically singing to her shadow. And though the opera isn't commonly performed and isn't really done, uh, Ombra is still recognized as a very, very important aria. So this scene is the opera's mad scene. Um, but first, what is a mad scene? <laughs> um, mad scenes became extremely popular in Italian and French operas in the early decades of the 19th century. It's essentially the moment when one of the main characters goes crazy. Um, it became a way for the singer to show off their abilities, and these arias require immense amounts of skill. In this case, the coloratura, or the highly embellished and often very fast-moving style of singing, uh, just goes off the charts to show how deranged Dinora has become and to show her singing to her shadow. But some of my favorite moments in the scene occur when Dinora starts to actually sing to herself as her shadow. So in order to accomplish the back and forth between Dinora and her shadow, Meyer Beer uses the idea of echoes and call and response um, with drastic variations in dynamic to show the dialogue between the two. So when it first happens, it's where Dinora sings <laughs> So in this little section, Dinora's literally singing ah respond and is asking and inviting her shadow for a response. And that's when the little imitation comes in that occurs at like piano, piano, piano versus forte um, to show like the difference and to really make it obvious who's singing when. In Natalie Desai's 1995 concert performance of the aria, she actually takes the imitation a step further by slowing down and singing much more staccato uh, when doing the echoes of the shadow. But in the Roberta Peters version, she takes the echoes at a much, much faster pace and instead, to show the contrast, makes a physical gesture of looking at her shadow. And although I really appreciate the agility and speed that Peters has in her interpretation, I prefer to say his characterization of the shadow. She shows much more dynamic contrast in her version. Um, and instead of just having the characterization of Dinora versus the shadow be physical, it's portrayed in her voice as well, which I think is what really takes it to the next level. Another clear difference between these two versions is simply just the language that it's in. Desai sings in the original French, whereas Peters sings in the readapted Italian version. Another stark difference between the Peters and the Desai versions um, is this slower middle section that the Peters version does not have. But honestly, I kind of like keeping it in because I think it shows a little bit more of Dinora's strife and struggle and the actual pain that she feels. Yes, 
So something for me that really sets this mad scene apart from a lot of other famous ones is its comedic aspect. So most mad scenes are usually very dramatic, very, very serious. My beer kind of flipped the idea on its head a little bit because being in triple meter, it it just kind of has more of a flowy feel than something very, very serious. Um, and he adds in like very obvious comedic bits, um, especially in like the la 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 la, la section. <laughs> everyone waits for but it seems like in every single version that I've listened to every single singer has a slightly different cadenza but honestly that's kind of what I love love a lot about it because the each cadenza is tailored to each individual singer so a lot of times if an orchestra is playing there will be a flute featured in the cadenza um, where the soprano will sing in thirds with the flute and will do this back and forth um, where the flute starts to represent the shadow instead of the singer singing for the shadow. Otherwise, the soprano will just sing both parts. the Roberta Peters cadenza because uh, she has this awesome section with the flute. The back and forth with the flute really brings out the flute-like agility and lightness in a coloratura's voice and I think that's a super special moment that isn't always highlighted as much as it could be in dramatic mad scenes but you cannot ignore the Natalie Bisset cadenza because your girl hits a high A flat six. So I really love this aria and this scene, and I really hope you learned something new today. Thanks!